Um, guys, we're not that off uh, the schedule. So thank you, speakers, for keeping uh, intact. And uh, I'm uh, very happy, uh, as always, to introduce our next speaker, the guy that uh, basically got me drawn into these uh, this incredible world, uh, Yuval Wagner, the founder and the chairman of Access Israel, who will share with us his thoughts on uh, 2023, the challenges promoting employment of people with disabilities here in Israel and in general. So Yuval, please. Hi everyone, a pleasure to be here with all of you. Uh, thank you all. I'm a white, bald man, uh, brown eyes, and uh, wearing a blue polo shirt. And I will immediately uh, share my screen. So uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, the lessons that we learned from what we have done in Israel and what we can learn from that on all of us that are in the issue of advancing employment for people with disabilities. I will skip this slide because Michal have already uh, talked about the mission of Access Israel of promoting inclusion and accessibility for all. And I just go straight ahead to what happened in Israel. Well, regarding employment of people with disability. Well, the roadmap, roadmap that started by an initiative originated in the private sector and only then became required by law for both the private and public sectors. It started by the union of the leading businesses in Israel, where they showed by themselves that this is important. And they started doing it then. Only then the government had made legislation out of that. And then every company, every company and organization today that have more than 100 employees must employ at least 3% people with disabilities in the private sector and 5% in the government and public sector. Sector. Every company also has to appoint a director of inclusive employment that is in charge of managing it, of making it happen. So you have a contact person in each company that you can approach to regarding this issue. You also have to make and publish the work plan, how it's going to achieve and employ these people in its company. And you have to advertise it in his website so you can see actually what the company and organizations are doing to promote it. And also, interesting, and now with us today uh, is the government themselves in the labor uh, ministry, where they have a big and very successful and very motivated unit that is all advertised advancement of inclusive employment, and they doing a lot, a lot of work from training to consulting, to helping out and doing everything they can to actually succeed. They're doing a great job. Due to this work in Israel, Israel jumped up a main, a great deal forward in, in improvement in real, the employment of people with disabilities. So I remember the days that you wouldn't write your name, your disability on the CV. And today it's opposite. If you want to make sure you are interviewed, you will state on your CV that you have a disability. I remember the days that companies uh, um, <clears throat> Uh, didn't find people with disability to work. Now today, because of those days, people with disability just wouldn't want to work. Today, after hiring so many people by organization, today we see over demand by the company for employees with disabilities. 
also organizations are complaining that it's tough to find those that they can hire or employ. So they do put a lot of effort to find them. People uh, with disabilities, we are finding out that are mostly employed in basic jobs rather than more living jobs or more uh, playable jobs. And many, and, and, and many people with disabilities are still afraid to, afraid to leave the regular financial rewards that they get from the government in favor of work. So these things are challenging, challenging us in another level or the next level or the next stage of what we should do to go forward and still employ more and more people with disabilities. So what we can learn from our experience in Israel for the 2023 and forward and the SDG 8 course is what we learned is very important that the CEOs of the company and organization fully understand and fully believe that it's good for their business, not just doing the right thing for the society. When they learn it, when they research it, and when they believe it, they do all they need, like any other business does, to actually make it happen. So we focus in Israel on, uh, on CEOs. Another thing is more government issue, where we have to improve the incentive for people with disabilities to stop staying at home and rely on the payments they get from the government rather than to go out and start working. And this is something being done by legislation and we hope it will happen soon in Israel to enable those that didn't get out from the unemployment to go to employment. The third thing is about training. Training people with disabilities. Uh, in Israel, people with disabilities first after they do the 12 years of school, then they go to the army, and they, they should go to the universities and then to go to jobs. But we have to make sure that people, after they study in, in school, they go to study a profession. They go to study in the university. It's super important because then they can be hired for more advanced jobs in higher wages rather than being hired only for the lower end of the jobs opportunities. So we should issue a, a very focus, we should focus on this issue too. But also when we hire an employee with disabilities, it's super, super important to train the managers and the co-workers we do it also in an experiential way, where people with disabilities are hired into in order to improve long-term success. Because when we train the manager and the coworker, we make bonding, we make understanding, we improve the connection with them, we are enabling them to be more efficient and more successful working together. And, uh, to train and develop employed people with disabilities so they can succeed and be advanced in the organization, which means even if we employ people with disabilities in basic jobs, it doesn't mean they have to stay there for many years. We can train them, we can help them, we can teach them so they can move forward, change position, earn more, be more efficient. They have a lot of potential invest in them, you'll see the results. Also, uh, after uh, Sutan talking about the uh, software and artificial intelligence software, especially, so we are looking forward to for innovations on recruitment of people with disabilities. This is an issue that should be developed. Another thing that we have thought is so that today, most countries are emphasis on making the website accessible, but they're not aware in uh, putting enough emphasis on making internal software that should be accessible. 
And what happens, you want to employ people with disabilities in your company, but your internal software are not accessible. So they are uh, actually in an unequal uh, uh, terms of working, and it's very hard for them to be both equal and efficient. So we are more, 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 more countries around the world, and more and more companies are now demanding when they do recruitment to making sure their internal software are accessible to. And of course, Israel Startup Nation, we always talk about developing new technologies to improve successful recruitment and employment. So this is it for, for me. So then in Israel, as I said, we are like, we feel like we are in the second stage of in, in, in promoting employment of people with disabilities. So when you go from stage to stage, you have different, the challenges are changing. And I think that many countries can learn from our experience in Israel to improve their uh, uh, efficiency and their success regarding employment for uh, people with disabilities. And here is my context, or actually these are contracts. We, as Michal said, we always love to share and both share and learn. So keep in touch. And and uh, thank you very much. No, um, going back to Michal. Thank you very much, Yuval. Um, uh, and um, it's always great to hear from you. So um, our first of all, before I introduce our next speaker, we had uh, questions in the chat. Uh, as I said at the beginning, the Zoom enables you to pin two people so you can pin a person um, signing in sign language and the speaker. If you want to pin more than two people, it's possible up to four people. Please send a, a, a chat to Shimrit and she will open that opportunity to, for you because it needs special approval. Uh, we cannot approve it for all. So uh, if you need that, please contact Shimrit Zik and she will make it possible.